Hello everyone. Today we're going to be talking about everyone's favorite interview question, which is the big O. What is the big O of this solution? And what they mean by that is how much time does it take or how much space does it take up? So we're going to be covering all the different types of big O. For example, big O of 1, big O of n, big O of log n, and so on. And for the most part, we're going to be talking about time because this is the more important one in most cases. So something like O of 1 just means given an input array, say 1, 2, 3, let's say this takes one second. And then we scale this array to 1, 2, and then this goes all the way up to 10,000, should still take one second. Whereas something like O of n scales linearly to the size of the input. And what that means is this has three elements. Let's say it takes one second to loop through each element. So this will take three seconds with three elements and it should take 10,000 seconds with 10,000 elements. For log n, it'll be a little bit different. Let's say it takes about one second for the three element situation. This would take somewhere around 13 to 14 seconds, like 13.2, I think it is, seconds, because we take log base two of 10,000. So from this diagram, we can see that as the input size increases, we want something that keeps the time complexity fairly low. So anything that scales very quickly as the input size increases would be a pretty bad algorithm. Anything that stays relatively flat is a pretty good algorithm. And I just want to note that O of 1 would be somewhere down here. It would just be completely flat all the way down. I'm not good at drawing straight lines, but just imagine that is a straight line. So you can say we had 3 here and we had 10,000 here from our previous example. You can see that if we had something like O of n squared, which we'll talk about in a bit. This one is O of n c, which just means any constant. This scales horrendously. So let's say I had 9 here. You can see that just adding 6 elements to the array massively increases the time it takes to run. Whereas something like O of 1 would just be completely constant all the way along, and you can see here that this is the best case scenario. Obviously it's not possible in every single scenario, but we want to be we want to be as close to the bottom as we can because at the end of the day all these algorithms lead to costs in compute power as in your machine has to run for x amount of seconds so if you can bring this down you can bring the cost down and your boss will say thank you so let's say we have an array that's just one two three elements an example of an o of one operation would be reading from the array for example just accessing my array at the zeroth index will give us one this takes O of one time because it's pretty much instant. We know from my previous video that if you are reading an array, it happens instantaneously. We also mentioned pushing and popping, which is basically adding and removing elements in the array. So let's say we wanted to add an element to the array. This also happens in O of one time if we are adding it to the end of the array because we'll have one, two, three. This will be what it looks like in RAM as well, and we just have to put something here for. I won't go heavily into the details of why adding and removing from the end of the array takes O of 1 time because I discussed this in my previous video. Just know that the push and the pop method take up O of 1 time. I went into quite a lot of detail in my previous video. It talks about how it works in the RAM and how it works under the hood. I suggest you check it out if you don't know what I'm talking about. Whereas if I wanted to add something in the middle of the array, this would take O of n time. And I will talk about that when we talk about O of n. And I'm going to briefly mention maps, even though we haven't covered them yet. But uh, reading a map will also take O of 1 time, because this will happen instantaneously. This is kind of the power of maps. Also, adding and removing anywhere in a map. So say I wanted to do my map C equals 2. This also takes O of 1 time. And also, removing, say I wanted to delete b, this will also take all of one time. I'll go into a bit more detail how this works under the hood once I cover hash maps, but just wanted to mention that this is also an O of 1 operation. Now let's talk about an O of n operation. Let's say we have an array that has a capacity of 5, so you can see there are 5 elements ready for us in the array, but a length of 3, so we've only used 3 of the elements. Now let's say we wanted to add an element at any point in the array. So let's say we wanted to add it at the end, now we know from just now that this would be an O of 1 operation because all we have to do is just put it there. This is an O of 1. But now let's say we wanted to add the element here instead. 
So what we would have to do, we can't just delete this. So we have to move this here, so this would be a three, and then we would have the four here. So that took two steps. But if we wanted to put it here, then we'd have to move this, we'd have to move this. So this would be a three, this would be a two, and this would be a four. And this takes three steps. And finally, just to drill it in, if we wanted to add it right at the beginning of the array, we'd have to move absolutely everything. So this would be three, two, one, and we'd have the four here. And this would take four steps just to add one element to the beginning of the array. And what this means is this scales linearly based on the input. And when we talk about O of n time or O, big O time in general, we take the worst case for most cases. I know I mentioned amortized time complexity in the past video, which basically means we take the average. And there are some cases where we take the average and some where we take the worst. But in general, we're talking about the worst case scenario unless specified otherwise. So something like adding two arrays at any index is an O of n operation. This would also be similar if we wanted to remove from, say, the beginning or any other point in the array with a method like shift, if you're used to JavaScript. So we could say my array dot shift, and this will return the first value. So we are removing this value. So let's say the one gets deleted, and then all of these have to shift along one step to give us two, three, four, five left in the array. So this is also an O of N operation because you have to loop through every single element and shift it one by one. And so how I want you to think about O of N or O of 1 or O of anything is just try to visualize the array and what's happening to the elements within it. Or not even an array, it could be a hash map, it could be a linked list or any other data structure we're going to talk about in the future. Just think, if I do some operation to these values, how many steps are going to be needed? And if I increase the number of inputs, so, so this could be one, two, three, all the way up to infinity, or probably not infinity, we don't want to mess with infinity, let's just say one million. How would this algorithm that I'm writing scale according to it? Because if I had a million items in my array and I wanted to remove the first one, I have to move a million items along the array, which is a very slow operation. Which is why if you want to access something like the first element, it's recommended to use maybe a linked list or some other data structure rather than arrays if you always want to access the first element. And so as you go through this course, you'll always be thinking about what is the most optimized way that I can solve this problem that I've been given. And whether this is on leak code or whether in an interview, it's good to verbally mention all these things and just say, just overshare, just say, as much as you possibly can about why you're choosing the algorithm you did and what you think the elements will be doing under the hood. One time complexity that's even better than O of n, but not better than O of 1, obviously, would be O of log n. And what this means is as, as the number of elements increases, the number of operations that we do on it will be divided by 2 on every single step. And one simple example of this would be, let's say we had a loop where we had to go through each individual thing this is obviously an O of n time. But then what if we went, every time we jumped, we doubled the distance we jumped. So the first jump goes to the second element. The second jump jumps two elements. And the next jump will jump four elements. This is a classic case of an O log n algorithm. Because as this scales up, every single time we jump, we're dividing the distance by two. So instead of me just talking in wavy terms constantly, let's have a look at some code. So the first example, we have a for loop where it starts at i equals 1. So we're starting here because this is 0 indexed. And it ends at my array length. So it ends over here. And on every step, we are multiplying i by 2. So for the first step, we'll be printing 3 because we start here, and then we multiply i by 2, so we end up here. So then we print 8, and then we multiply i by 2 again, so we're at 4. So let me just write these all out. And so we print 12, and then we jump all the way over to 8, which will give us this, 2, and then the next jump will be completely out of bounds at 0.16. So the only things we'll be returning are these four values. 
You can see that an algorithm like this takes, will run fairly quickly because we're not looping through every single individual component. We're skipping through. Now, if you're ever wondering why something like this would be useful, where we don't look through everything and we just kind of divide the array by half, we're going to introduce something called a binary search. We'll cover this in a bit more detail in the future, but this is a classic case of an O log n complexity algorithm. And every time someone asks you to search something, if the data is sorted, chances are you're going to be using a binary search. And what this is, is it takes two pointers. You can call these left and right or start and end. Let's say we're searching for the value eight. So this is our target. We're going to start with these two pointers and the algorithm is basically going to say, is our first value the target? No. Is it our right value the target? No. Okay, take the middle of these. So then we get the midpoint would be here. Since the target, which is eight, is less than our right pointer and more than our left pointer, we then set our right pointer here. And at this point, we can pretty much eliminate this entire part of the array in one whole, in one step. So the time complexity of searching in a way like this is pretty good. And then we check again, is our left pointer the solution? Still no, still no. And then we uh, choose another midpoint, which is here. And we know that eight is higher than five. So we take our left pointer and move it here. And so in the second step, we've now eliminated all of this of the array. And now we just check, get another midpoint, which is here. Is this our answer? Yes, okay, we found it. So rather than looping through everything and checking for the solution, we did three steps. The first step eliminated half of the array here. The second step eliminated another half of the array. And then we were just left with this small array. And I'll do a whole video on binary search and applications of it in the future. But I just wanted to show you an example of an O log n because whenever you speak of O log n, binary search is probably the first thing that comes to most people's minds. Now I'm going to talk about a time complexity that you should probably avoid as much as you can, which is O of n squared or O of n cubed or anything else, O of n to the power of four. And what this basically means is as the input's number increases, your time that the algorithm takes will increase quadratically. So the input could be one, two. You can see that the input number increases, increases the time that it takes or the space that it takes dramatically. So you want to avoid this like the plague, but I'm going to show you an example of how you could achieve something like O of n squared. So here we've got an example of a bad function, which will run in O of n squared time. And you can see that it's n squared because there's a loop within a loop. So what we're doing is we're starting at zero. So I equals zero. And then we're also going to, into the inner loop, which is here, where I equals zero again. And then we're going along I, j equals 1, j equals 2, j equals 3, and i is still 0 this whole time. So what we'll be console logging here would be 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 2, and so on. And then once we go all the way through with the j's, we start back with the i's, and then i will be equal to 1. And once again, j equals 0, j equals 1, j equals 2, all the way. So we have 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 2, and so on. So you can see that for every element in the array, let's actually start over here so you can see what I'm doing, we're going to have to do the number of elements in the array, so this will be n operations. So here we'll have n operations, here we'll have n operations, here we'll have n operations. And then the number of things that we're doing is also n, so we'll have n times n complexity. So we'll end up with O of n times n, which is also written as, and I don't think I have to go into detail why this is bad, because for every single step you're doing everything again. And this is probably the solution you're going to come up with first. When you see a problem, like a leak code problem, you'll see it. This O of n squared solutions are probably the easiest ones to think of. Just be wary that you are doing a loop within a loop and it's very slow. And I just wanted to mention that if we had a loop within a loop, it doesn't necessarily mean O of n squared. For example, if this here was just two, then we know for a fact that this inner 
loop is always going to take O of two steps. And in big O language, we just ignore our constants, so this would just dumb down to O of one. And also in big of O, we only ever take the highest order. So this will take O of n, this will take O of one. We completely ignore the O of one, and in this scenario, this will only take O of n. Because for every element in here, we are doing two operations. What we're printing in this scenario would be 0, 0, 0, 1, and then we'll move on to the next one because it's just hit 2, and we'll move to 1, 0, 1, 1, and so on. So for every one of these, we do two operations, and we just ignore constants, as I mentioned, so we can treat it as doing one operations. And so what we're seeing is for every element, we're doing one operation, and there's n of them, so this dumbs down to O of n. So just to round things off, I'm going to talk in a lot more detail about O of n operations in the future videos where we discuss other data structures like linked lists and hash maps and also certain algorithms themselves. But what you need to take away is that we want to be as close to O of 1 as we can for every single algorithm we can think of. Where that's not possible, maybe log of n or n is acceptable and even n log n in some cases, but we really, really want to stay away from n squared or even worse, which is 2 to the power of n. And also, if we had two algorithms in the same place that are running simultaneously, we will take the largest of it. So if we had an O of n, and we have an O of log n that both need to run, then we only take the bigger one, because this we can just ignore as n goes to infinity. We'll take the bigger one, and this just gets deleted. The other main rule is that if you had a constant, say 2 of n, then this gets dumbed down to O of n. Because you can see that as this tends towards infinity, 2 times infinity is basically the same as infinity.